so we're going to sing now uh, a modern hymn. It's called How Deep the Father's Love by Stuart Townend, and it speaks of, of what God did for us through his son Jesus on the cross. And it's a great Easter hymn, great modern Easter hymn. So join with us to sing How Deep the Father's Love. to our Good Friday service, a time when we gather together as Jesus' friends and family did at the foot of the cross, remembering what happened to Jesus. Each year we try and think of ways to get across the significance of the events of Good Friday in a way that engages with all ages. And today I'm hoping that you've been able to gather all the bits we've been mentioning this week in readiness for our service. So just a reminder before we begin our service then, you need um, some money, maybe a pound coin or, um, or something more, maybe something less, um, some bread and some grapes if possible, a feather, uh, a red circle of paper or card and a heart uh, cut out of paper or card. You need a bit of wool, uh, about 30 centimetres long or a piece of string or cotton. And if possible, uh, a piece of material that you don't mind can be uh, ripped apart or a piece of paper that you can rip um, apart too. Um, a pencil and a black pen. And hopefully you've all been able to make a cross uh, that you've uh, made out of something. Maybe yours is more extravagant than ours. And if possible as well. Open a Bible and have it towards the last chapters of Matthew's Gospel. If you've not yet got these things together and know where you might find them in the house, then please, I encourage you to pause the video and get them together before pressing play again. And if you can't get them, don't worry, I'm sure you can use your imagination to help you through our service today. So the first thing I want you to do, which will seem a bit strange, is to get the black pen and make a mark on the back of your hand. Now kids, you've got special permission to do that. So uh, yeah, do do that if you are able with a black pen. And we'll come back to that later in the service. 
So as we begin, let's ask God to help us as we gather together for this service. Let us pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, we have, we have gathered, gathered together on this Good Friday to seek you. Open our eyes afresh to see what you went through for us. Melt our hearts with your love, that we might love you more, and be willing to lay down our lives for the sake of others, for the glory of your name. Amen. I really appreciate the support of my friends in York and they are going to be leading us again in some sung worship in today's Good Friday service. I hope you'll feel able to join in the songs whilst you're at home. It was lovely after Sunday's service to chat to people who said they sung their hearts out because there was nobody around to listen. <laughs> but even if you have got people around to listen, then I encourage you to join together and to join with us as we sing our opening hymn, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. This week through our Holy Week meditations we've been reflecting on times Jesus spent with others and asking what we can learn from those moments. Earlier in the week we heard from two people. We heard from Mary who anointed Jesus' feet with very expensive perfume. Or in Tom's video I think it was some expensive aftershave that he mm. used. Those who watched on when Mary did that were horrified that she should waste such expensive perfume in such a way. The money, they argued, could have been given to the poor. They moralised about it. And then we also heard from Judas. Judas, who was ready to betray Jesus for money. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Mary was devoted to Jesus in her heart. Jesus was her master. Whereas Judas, who was devoted to money in his heart, money was his master. As a result of 
being devoted to Jesus. The woman gave her life savings to him in the perfume she poured over his body. As a result of being devoted to money, Judas was willing to take 30 silver coins, approximately four months wages, in return for the betrayal of Jesus. And so we take hold of our first item. It's the pound coin, or maybe a 10 pound note, or a 50 pence piece, whatever it may be. I encourage you to hold the coin in the palm of your hands and look at it for a few seconds. Andrew. We are presented with the same choice as Judas and the woman in Bethany, who is our master. Who are we really? devoted to? Is our master Jesus or money? This morning we're going to give you an opportunity to make that choice. You've set this pound or ten pounds aside. What will you do with it? Is there a way that you can use this pound in the work of Jesus' kingdom? to our work with children and families, for food bank, to support others in our world today, or whether to keep the money for yourself. Will you choose to pop the money in an envelope, put it to one side for when you get out and give it away? Or maybe go online and donate your pound or your amount of money. This is your chance to think about who you really serve. Is your master Jesus or money? Maybe at this moment you want to press pause to think about this a little bit more. Or if you have others with you, to talk it through with them. Last night we remembered the Lord's Supper. What do you know about the Lord's Supper? We're going to share some modern artistic impressions of what it might have been like on your screen. I encourage you to take your time to look at them. You might like them, you might not. What do you notice in the pictures? Is there anything that strikes you about this supper? about Jesus or his disciples? Is there anything that you find bubbling up inside in terms of thoughts or emotions or feelings? I encourage you to take your time to look at these. Again, you may like to pause the video to think or if you're able to chat with others about this and about the images that are before you now.
The meal that Jesus and his disciples were celebrating together was the Passover meal, when they remembered how God had led them out of slavery in Egypt to freedom. During this celebration, Jesus gave a new meaning to this familiar meal. He broke bread to remind them that his body would be broken on the cross. And he shared wine to remind them that his blood would be shed. These symbols of broken bread and wine would remind Jesus' followers in the future of the freedom from the slavery of sin that Jesus won for them on the cross. Have you been able to get some bread and grapes or something similar? In the next few moments, take and eat the bread and grapes as a way of remembering Jesus' Passover meal with his friends. After the Passover meal, we next see Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus went through agony in the garden as he wrestled with the choice of whether or not to obey his Father and be willing to die the death that we deserve. He chose the Father's will over his own. Most of the disciples, on the other hand, chose to run away as soon as soldiers came to arrest Jesus. Take a look at the prayer that is on your screen. Read it through and think or talk with those who you're with about what it means. If you feel you want to, please join with me as we say this prayer together. Will you join with me, Andre? Jesus, Jesus thank, thank you that, that you chose to obey your Father. Thank you that you chose to die the death I deserve for my sins. Help me to choose to obey you in every choice I have to make. Amen. Amen. After Jesus had been arrested, we see Peter watching on from a safe distance. We pick up the story in Matthew chapter 26 and we'll read that now and it's going to come from the message version of the Bible. All this time Peter was sitting out in the courtyard. One servant girl came up to him and said, you were with Jesus the Galilean. In front of everybody there he denied it. I don't know what you're talking about. As he moved over toward the gate, someone else said to the people there, This man was with Jesus, the Nazarene. Again, he denied it, salting his denial with an oath. I swear I never laid eyes on the man. Shortly after that, some bystanders approached Peter. You've got to be one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he got really nervous and swore, I don't know the man. Just then, a rooster crowed. Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and cried and cried and cried. Peter chose to deny knowing Jesus three times. He was afraid of what might happen to him. He put looking after himself before following Jesus. We can all do the same thing as Peter. We can deny knowing Jesus, especially when we're afraid of what others might think of us or might do to us. Did you find a feather for our service today? I bet it wasn't a pink one like this if you found it out in the street. <laughs> it 
Can you pick up that feather now? This feather is a reminder of the cockerel that crowed after Peter had denied knowing Jesus three times. Let's each take a moment to hold the feather in our hands and in a moment of silence to say sorry to Jesus for the times that we too have denied knowing him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Soon after, Jesus is brought before Pilate. Again, we hear this part of the story, read from the Message version of the Bible. Jesus was placed before the governor, who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, if you say so. But when the accusations rained down hot and heavy from the high priests and religious leaders, he said nothing. Pilate asked him, Do you hear that long list of accusations? Aren't you going to say something? Jesus kept silence, not a word from his mouth. The governor was impressed, really impressed. It was an old custom during the feast for the governor to pardon a single prisoner named by the crowd. At the time, they had the infamous Jesus Barabbas in prison. With the crowd before him, Pilate said, Which prisoner do you want me to pardon? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the so-called Christ? He knew it was through sheer spite that they had turned Jesus over to him. While court was still in session, Pilate's wife sent him a message. Don't get mixed up in judging this nobleman. I've just been through a long and troubled night because of a dream about him. Meanwhile, the high priests and religious leaders had talked the crowd into asking for the pardon of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. The governor asked, Which of the two do you want me to pardon? They said, Barabbas! Then what do I do with Jesus, the so-called Christ? They all shouted, Nail him to a cross! He objected, But for what crime? But they yelled all the louder, Nail him to a cross! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, and that a riot was imminent, he took a basin of water and washed his hands in full sight of the crowd, saying, I am washing my hands of responsibility for this man's death. From now on, it's in your hands, your judge and jury. The crowd answered, We'll take the blame, we and our children after us. Then he pardoned Barabbas, but he had Jesus whipped and then handed over for crucifixion. Pilate knew that the people had chosen to crucify a sinless man instead of a murderer. Instead of doing the right thing and releasing Jesus, Pilate sinned and condemned Jesus to death. He washed his hands as a way of trying to wash away his guilt. But guilty hearts can't be washed clean with soap and water. Look at the black mark on the back of your hand. You know, the one we asked you to put there at the beginning of the service. Let it remind you of the wrong things that you choose to do. Now take your thumb and see if you can remove that mark on the back of your hand by simply rubbing hard like a rubber. If you're like me, you'll find that it cannot be removed. It's like that with sin. 
We cannot get rid of sin by ourselves. And so we reach the cross. Can you get the cross that you've made and stand it up somewhere in sight? And we now read from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. Along the way they came on a man from Cyrene named Simon and made him carry Jesus' cross. Arriving at Golgotha, the place they call Skull Hill, they offered him a mild painkiller, a mixture of wine and myrrh. But when he tasted it, he wouldn't drink it. After they had finished nailing him to the cross and were waiting for him to die, they whiled away the time by throwing dice for his clothes. Above his head, they had posted the criminal charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Along with him, they also crucified two criminals, one to his right, the other to his left. People passing along the road jeered, shaking their heads in mock lament. You bragged that you could tear down the temple and then rebuild it in three days. So show us your stuff. Save yourself. If you're really God's son, come down from that cross. The high priests, along with the religion, scholars and leaders, were right there mixing it up with the rest of them, having a great time poking fun at him. He saved others. He can't save himself. King of Israel, is he? Then let him get down from that cross. We'll all become believers then. He was so sure of God. Well, let him rescue his son now, if he wants him. He did claim to be God's son, didn't he? Even the two criminals crucified next to him joined in the mockery. Jesus hung on the cross to take the punishment for the wrong things we have done. Sin cost Jesus his life. God chooses to forgive us if we confess our sins to him, trusting in Jesus' sacrifice alone. I'm hoping that you have a red circle that you've cut out from paper. Can I give that to you, Andrew? Mm or a piece of paper um, that you've maybe coloured in red. If you can now take that, and a pencil. Sorry, I'm asking you to multitask here, Andrew. The red circle is actually to represent a drop of blood, Jesus' blood. And we're gonna take a moment of quiet now and allow God to show us some of the things that maybe we have done wrong. And as he shows us those things, we can choose to write them. Maybe it just be one word, maybe it be a few more. But we write them on the droplet of blood. And once you've taken time to write, and again you may want to pause this video, then I encourage you to place that drop of blood at the cross with the words facing into the cross. Remember God's promise in John's first letter, chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, then God forgives them. So now we've all got really good at washing our hands thoroughly. So I want to invite you uh, to go and give your hands a really good wash so that you rub the dirty mark from the back of your hands a sign of God's forgiveness that your sin has been washed away. Now, I didn't want to go off camera, so I've just got some baby wipes. Well, they're actually antibacterial hand wipes. So I've just got those. You might want one as well, might yeah, you? So it's a bit difficult getting the sink into this shop, Indeed. isn't it? And I'm hoping that these might do the trick. And do you know what? I still might have to go and wash my hands. That's the lesson now. It's getting there. Give it a good wipe, good wipe. Yeah, I've got rid of mine. Have you got rid yes, of yours? Yes, I've got rid of mine. My hands 
hands are white now. Are you going to get rid of those? Yeah, I'll get rid of those. Thank you. And as a reminder that you are forgiven, if you've got a piece of white string or wool or cotton, maybe even a ribbon, I invite you to tie it around your wrist. As a reminder that you are forgiven. So once more we return to our Gospel readings, this time to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, verses 45 to 54, the death of Jesus. From noon to three, the whole earth was dark. Around mid-afternoon, Jesus groaned out of the depths, crying loudly, Eli, Eli, lamana sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some bystanders who heard him said, he's calling for Elijah. One of them ran and got a sponge soaked in sour wine and lifted it on a stick so he could drink. The others joked, don't be in such a hurry. Let's see if Elijah comes and saves him. But Jesus again cried out loudly, breathed his last. At that moment, the temple curtain was ripped in two, top to bottom. There was an earthquake and rocks were split in pieces. What's more, tombs were opened up and many bodies of believers asleep in their graves were raised. After Jesus' re resurrection, they left the tombs, entered the holy city and appeared to many. The captain of the guard and those with him, when they saw the earthquake and everything else that was happening, were scared to death. They said, this has to be the Son of God. When Jesus died, the temple curtain that separated God's presence from, from all the people was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, because of Jesus' death, there is access for us into God's presence. We are able to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father as the barrier of sin has been dealt with. Everything has changed for us because Jesus' mission has been accomplished. As Jesus put it in his final words from the cross, it is finished. So now please take your piece of material or paper. I would love it. If you could join with me in a shout that maybe even wakes the neighbours as we join with Jesus as he's shouting, it is finished. And as we do, I want you to rip your piece of material from top to bottom or your piece of paper from top to bottom as a reminder that we can now come freely to God and enjoy uh, knowing him. Right, we haven't practised this, have we, Andrew? There's a little tear there, I'm hoping. Maybe if you can hold that side and I can hold this side and we can tear and we have to shout, it is finished. Are we ready? One, two, three. It is it's finished. finished. And as Matthew's gospel draws chapter 27 to a close, telling how Joseph of Arimathea was given permission by Pilate to place Jesus in his own tomb a new tomb only recently cut out of the rock. If we'd read there, we'd see the large stone rolled across the entrance, sealing the tomb. Jesus' body laid there. And Mary Magdalene and the other Mary are left sitting, watching, grieving. As we leave Jesus, today in the tomb with a stone across it. Let's finish by focusing on the love that Jesus showed us in giving up his life. What more could God have done to show his love? Jesus himself said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So finally, Take the heart-shaped card and your pencil. 
and take hold of that on the pencil. And in response to the love that Jesus has shown us, let's offer our lives afresh to him this Good Friday morning. And if you'd like to do that, then write your name in the centre of the heart-shaped card or piece of paper. And as our service closes, as you keep your cross at home, place your heart, your name, at the foot of the cross. For many, many years, I have joined with others in the Walker Witness to West Derby Village. Even as a child, we used to walk from the church that I went to in Club Moor. And often when we were there, we'd sing two hymns, two Good Friday hymns. And one was always, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I love this hymn and we're going to sing it now with our friends from York, with Ian and Becky and Jonah leading us. And they're leading us in a modern version of this hymn. And I hope that you'll feel able to join in the words with all your hearts as we thank God, thank Jesus for his sacrifice for us this day. And I pray that this day may continue to be a day when you remember Jesus and his love for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Let's sing together. Okay, we'd like it if you could join us in singing um, a lovely traditional hymn, um, Easter hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. together in a prayer as we continue on in this day and into um, into Holy Saturday and on looking forward to meeting again 
on Easter Sunday, but waiting in this day, in this Good Friday. Let's pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, as we, we have, have joined, joined together, together to worship in our homes and to remember your death on the cross, keep our hearts burning with gratitude and love for all that you have given to us. Enable us to walk in humble obedience with you and may we know the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, today and always. Amen. Amen. We look forward to gathering on Easter Sunday when our worship will um, be at 10.30 in the morning. We're hoping as well to have a Zoom celebration service in the evening, so watch out for the details of that. May God continue to bless you this day. Thank you for joining in our service.